All right. Well, it is seven o'clock, and uh, we have a, a complement of people here, so this is uh, great. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we do have a little bit of an agenda, which some of you have may have seen. Uh, we'd like to begin with a reading, and uh, last time Moyer talked about sharing a reading with us, although it has been a couple months, so I'm not sure if uh, she remembers. Are, are you ready to share a reading? No, you don't, you don't have anything for us? Moira, I'm looking at you. Uh, you're, you're muted right now. I was muted. I apologize. Yes, I'm good. I'm good. So you I can have do a it. reading to share? Yes, I do. Fantastic. Well, let's start off then with uh, Moira, and then we'll have a round of introductions after that, and we can all kind of get to know each other just a little bit. The forest waits in silence, pooling so deep that shadows take form. In the corners of our eyes, we see them, shadows running, flying, rustling. The winter breathes an icy breath through barren branches, arms rubbing together, roots sunk deep in the cold, hard ground, where each molecule of earth is connected to another by particles of ice. In this forest, in this silence, in this darkness, there is life. The forest waits. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, can you tell us what, what that is, where that comes from? I actually wrote it. Um, I wrote it because I, I spend a lot of time in the forest, and that's something very much from my climate. Um, I wrote it for a Yule. Um, event. It has a lot of other parts to it, but that's the opening piece to it. And it's from my experience, from my magic in the work I do in the forest. So that's where it came from. What's your name again? Moira Ashley. Moira, okay. Yeah. And in fact, uh, Moira, are you? Oh. that's our next thing is we wanted to do a round of introductions. So uh, Moira, you've already said your name. Maybe you can just <laughs> yeah. tell us where I, you're... Uh, where you're actually uh, physically located and maybe, I don't know, what your, what your favorite time of year is, if you have one. And we'll just rotate okay. through then and, and uh, we can all get to know each other just a little bit. Okay, I'm Maura Ashley. I live up in Massachusetts. Um, it's cold, well, yesterday it was 70, so I, I don't know anymore, but it will be cold the next week. We have winter pretty deeply here and darkness. I mean, it doesn't get light till seven in the morning and it gets dark at 4 p.m. So. We have a lot of darkness this time of year. Uh, it's not my favorite time of year. I'm an organic gardener and I love the summer. I'm a summer person, but I also need to honor all of the seasons. And I go out every day, all year long, winter and summer, out in the snow and the ice, but I, that's, that's who we are. I mean, that's, you know, if we're not connected to the earth, if we're not out there, really out there with the energies, then, then when I feel like I'm not doing my work. And that is Laura, are you a neo pagan? I am a um, I am a witch. I'm an initiated witch of um, a hereditary um, tradition. Um, it's out of the Glenshire order, which um, our cunning man is Andres Corbin Arthur. So I'm of that, and I've been in, um, on this path for over thirty years. So. Cool. <laughs> Long time. Fantastic. So if we could just kind of um, Rotate well, yeah. according to my screen, anyway. The next person in order might be Chesh. Um, Chesh, would you be willing to uh unmute and introduce yourself? Just tell us uh who you are, where you're located, and maybe if you have a favorite time of year, what that is. Hello, folks. I hope you can hear me, yes. and I apologize if I disappear um suddenly because I'm tuning in from Sheffield, England. Oh, wow! Oh, wow. So, um expat as you might imagine uh also oh gosh 30 plus years eclectic fam trad witch and oh gosh uh, it's the autumn it's always been the autumn for me it it's always been the time of year when things start to shift and true colors are revealed and there's the hint of winter to come but it's not here yet and so there's still time to celebrate and to connect 
So I'm delighted that I can be here. I hope I can stay. And if I depart abruptly again, it's a tech problem. So please don't think you scared me off. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next in line, I would have uh, Joe Carson, please. And then uh, after Joe, Alex P. Oh, yes, and to unmute, there you go, you're unmuted. Hopefully I just successfully unmuted. Yes. Okay, um, yeah, Joe Carson, I live in Fairfax, California, and uh, that's where I'm calling in from. Um, I'm, uh, I suppose you would say, the leader of Farafaria, which is a pagan tradition that's been here since the 50s, 1950s. And uh, um, I, in terms of the time of year, would choose that moment where winter is giving away to spring and uh, the waters are still flowing in the local waterfalls and everything is starting to sprout up fresh and new again. Very nice, thank you so much. So uh, Alex, you're up next. After Alex will be Andrea, please. All right, hello everyone. I'm Alex Field. I'm the uh, chapter leader for Columbia, South Carolina, where I'm calling in from. And I have always been a summer person. Fantastic, thank you very much. Andrea, if you could unmute and uh, after you, we'll have Kent. Hi, I'm Andrea Kendall and I'm here in lovely Oregon. Uh, and I definitely fall is my favorite time of the year, just with the changing the colors, especially here in Oregon, we just get these incredibly beautiful uh, changing of the leaves. Thank you. All right, Kent, you're up next. And after Kent, we'll have Clara. Hi, I'm Kent. I'm from Fullerton, California. Do you have a favorite time of year, Kent? Uh, not really. All right, that's that's perfectly acceptable. Thank you. And uh, Clara, if you could go next, then we'll have Aileen after you. I'm Clara Fang. I live in Detroit, and I am the Higher Education Outreach Director for CCL. Uh, my favorite time of year is summer. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. So uh, Aileen, also known as Maka, you're up next, and after you will be Aaron. Hi, my name is Maka. At least I'm known in the um, pagan world as Maka. I'm a witch at large. I, I'm in Northern California, and I really love the late autumn. I love especially the angle of the light, which I imagine people in New England <laughs> get a lot different than we do here in a temperate zone, in a Mediterranean zone. But I love the quality of light. That's just the right slant. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Aaron, if you could unmute, we'd love to hear from you next. And after you would be Dawn. Hi, I'm Aaron. Um, I live in Victoria, BC right now, but I am Scottish originally. I um, My favorite season is whatever season I'm in, especially when I'm here in Victoria. And so right now it's just starting to turn here. And I saw the first bud that, uh, yesterday and the the, the light is starting to get a little bit longer, and so I'm starting to feel that excitement for spring coming around. Um, I'm a pagan, and I also practice in UU as well. Wow, great, thank you. Uh, Dawn, you'll be up next, and then after Dawn, we'll have Deborah. Hi, I'm Dawn. I'm in the Twin Cities, and you actually get two for one with, uh, with this participant because my husband Keith is here with me as well. Hello. Uh, my favorite season is fall. My favorite season is winter. I love the 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 cold, the, old, the, cold, the stillness, the uh, time to inner reflect. We're happy to have joined you. Thank you very much. Okay, Deborah, you're up next, and I believe then that will bring it to me. Hi, um, my legal name is Deborah Frankel. I sometimes write under the name Deborah Bender. I live in a small suburban town in Marin County, California. Um, I uh, have been practicing witch for many years uh, in various traditions, uh, one of them being the Rugged, which I guess is Wiccanate or quasi-neo-pagan. It's a little bit of its own sort. Um, and uh, my uh, favorite 
season used to be summer, uh, but since I've lived in the San Francisco Bay Area, I'm starting to shift to around this time of year, left late uh, January, early February, for the similar reasons to what Joe was saying. Very nice. Thank you so much to everybody for joining us. Uh, my name is Bart, Bart Everson. Uh, I am located here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm a co-organizer with New Orleans Lamplight Circle, which is kind of a pagan social networking uh, group here. And I'm, um, my, I'm, I'm a, a summer partisan. Uh, some people think that that's really perverse living in New Orleans because summer lasts about five months here. And uh, I really especially like the late summer when it's just really unbearably hot, just as long as, as we don't have any hurricanes. But that's just me. Uh, well, thank you everybody for being here. I had meant to say earlier per our agenda that uh, we did just wanna, you know, of course say that this is the Earth-Based Spirituality Action Team for Citizens Climate Lobby and that our only real ground rules for these meetings uh, so far has just been, you know, to be respectful of one another and to acknowledge the diversity of, uh, of, of viewpoints that might be here and to for everybody to not make, you know, assumptions about anybody else, but just to kind of try to listen and, and, and be present with people. Of course, the purpose of this group is to uh, further the mission of Citizens Climate Lobby uh, to build political will to solve climate the climate crisis, uh, there's a particular emphasis, of course, on uh, advancing that carbon fee and dividend bill that's uh, under consideration right now, and there's different ways to do that, but also just more broadly speaking, to do what we can uh, in many, many different forms to, um, you know, really to recruit people for Citizens Climate Lobby, and then to engage our members in taking action to accomplish the, the goals. Uh, Part of the unique perspective, of course, of the Earth-Based Spirituality Action Team, I think is that we have a, a unique uh, perspective to offer. And in light of that, we have uh, Adrian Harris uh, from the UK as our special guest. Now, he, he had to, uh, offer, he had to, uh, he couldn't actually be here at this meeting, so he's recorded a message for us. I'm going to uh, share that if I can figure now I've spent most of the day today actually trying to get the technology working for this. So I, I hope that it works. So let's all, you know, cross our fingers or, or knock on wood or do whatever it is that we need to do. Uh, but I'm going to try sharing uh, this screen and uh, we'll see if hopefully this works. So tell me if it doesn't, but here we go. Greetings. I'm sorry I'm not, not able to make this presentation live, but the timings for the UK made that difficult. In any event, it's a real pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to you about the question that has guided my life. How can my spirituality serve the other than human world? That's a huge subject for a short talk, so I'm going to focus in on my most recent thoughts about eco-magic. I'll begin by briefly outlining what I mean by eco-magic and explain why, until quite recently, I'd stopped doing it altogether. I'll then introduce the embodied pathways of connection and show how they can deeply support my purpose. The Dragon Environmental Network defines eco-magic as magical and spiritual action for the environment. I'm happy with that very broad definition, but in practice, eco-magic tends to be much narrower and more specific. We want something to happen, or not happen, so we do a spell or a ritual to achieve our aim. I've frequently engaged in this kind of eco-magic in the past, with intentions that included trying to save ancient woodland, or curing sudden oak death disease. Although not explicitly eco-magic, the recent Trump binding spell is a good example of this kind of approach. In my experience, this work is sometimes helpful and sometimes not. But my concern here is that it tends to be quite ego-driven. An individual, or perhaps a group, decide that some specific outcome is important, and they do the magic to try and make it so. 
I can recall a few instances where we took time to check in with the other than human world about what we were planning to do. On those occasions, the original proposal was either dropped entirely or became so complicated by this new input that it was hard to find a way forward. As a result of all these considerations, I stopped doing this kind of classic eco-magic quite a while ago. More recently, I and other activists have experienced a more subtle process at work that's grounded in connection to spirit and following the intuitions that emerge from that. There are various approaches that help us connect our everyday awareness to our deep intuition. And crucially, all of these also enhance our awareness of our intimate connection to nature the other than human world. These approaches are all embodied, so I call them the embodied pathways of connection, or more simply, the epoch. I first identified the epoch during my PhD research into eco-paganism, but I've only recently realised that they have a powerful eco-magical dimension. I've been working primarily with the seven epoch that I identified in my original research, but there are certainly more. These seven are 1. Spending time in nature 2. Ritual 3. Dance 4. Trance 5. Meditation 6. Psychedelics, which I prefer to call entheogens and 7 a therapeutic technique called experiential focusing. Part of the reason why the epoch work is explained by Eugene Gendlin, the philosopher and therapist who developed experiential focusing. He wrote that the physically felt body is in fact part of a gigantic system of here and other places, now and other times, you and other people. In fact, the whole universe. Gendlin, like many other thinkers, recognised that we are not the isolated individuals of our cultural myth. The philosopher of consciousness, Christian de Quincey, expresses it very well. We are constituted by webs of interconnection. Relationship comes first, and we emerge as more or less distinct centres within the vast, and complex networks that surround us. Gendlin and De Quincey write from a philosophical perspective, but you can use whatever framework works for you. We might understand Gendlin's gigantic system as simply another term for the ancestors, the gods, the fair folk, or the genius loci. I think where you practice any given epoch, and perhaps your intent, will impact on who or what you connect with. So if you practice in a wood, you'll be more likely to connect with a genius loci. But if you're working on a burial mound, it might be the whites and or the ancestors. In other contexts, you might access the group mind or Jungian archetypes. But I don't want to get too caught up in labels, which might not be very helpful. So go with whatever language works for you. How does this approach to eco-magic work in practice? To be honest, I'm still unpacking this, but this is what I'm proposing for now. First, you use one or more of the epoch to help you to sense into what you're called to do. This may be different from what you think you should do. But if you're connected with the bigger system of which we're all a part, it will be what you need to do. This is eco-magic, not ego-magic. Next, get on with whatever it is that you're called to do and keep on the lookout for help. Again, the epoch will help keep you open to new directions. When all this starts to work, you'll begin to experience synchronicities almost every day. That's confirmation that you're on track, 
doing what you're called to do. I think this is how traditional shamanism operates. The shaman uses one or more of the epoch to sense into the issue and learns what needs to happen. They then use the epoch to take that solution forward. Although I originally identified the pathways of connection amongst eco-pagan activists, I later realised that they also underpin many psychotherapeutic approaches. In retrospect, that's not surprising. Anything that facilitates greater connection will be therapeutic. Because the epoch are profoundly therapeutic, they will support your mental and your spiritual health helping you to stay strong in the work that you do. So, to recap, the embodied pathways of connection enable us to access transpersonal wisdom via our deep intuitions. They simultaneously enhance our connection to nature and provide support and healing for our mental health. These three aspects make the epoch valuable tools for eco-magic, which I define as magical and spiritual action for the environment. Maybe you're already using the embodied pathways of connection, in which case I'd be really interested to hear more. I'm working on a book about them at the moment, so if you're interested in this approach, I can certainly provide more information. Meanwhile, I'm occasionally blogging about the epoch at body mind place finally thank you for your attention i hope you found this as useful to listen to as i did to put it together bye all right well i wanted to say thank you to maka also for making that connection to uh dr harris she was the contact reached out to him and uh, of course grateful to him for sharing his thoughts. Obviously, he touched on some pretty big issues, steep issues. Uh, it's, it's a lot, and for a, a very brief talk, uh, he wasn't able to uh, get into great depth on any one of those, but I think it's pretty easy to, at least I think, it's easy to see the connection between uh, what he's talking about and the work that we're trying to promote with Citizens Climate Lobby. But if any, perhaps anybody, uh, and the meeting has some thoughts they'd like to share about that. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about Adrian. Please do. Just a little bit. He's a professor in England, as you know, and um, he has a group that's not as active as it used to be called the Dragon Environmental Network. And they were doing Echo Magic, and you can find their website under that name. And I met him through the Pagan Studies section of the American Academy of Religions. <laughs> so that's one of the values of networking in, in academia. And he, uh, he and I co-wrote um, a piece for an anthology, a textbook, several years ago. So I think he's really fascinating. He's, and I know he's really active these days in um, Extinction Rebellion. Because hmm. it's more developed in uh, Europe, <clears throat> I think, than here. And I have another person who was going to be here tonight, except that she got arrested in New York City. <laughs> For a demonstration when she she was she was with um, Extinction Rebellion and uh, she's in court today, but she's going to come again another time. Great. What did she get arrested for? Some demonstration or something they were doing with um, Extinction Rebellion. Certainly, an excellent reason to be arrested. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Righteous civil disobedience. Well, it is, uh, we are going to keep this meeting down to a, a half an hour. We're at 7.26 my time, 26 minutes past the hour. I did want to uh, make sure that we didn't um, uh, end the meeting before taking care of some basic business that we need to do, which is um, basically just uh, you know, using this opportunity where we're talking to each other to kind of decide what our next steps are going forward. Uh, when our next call is going to be, but more importantly, uh, really, uh, we want to kind of spread spread it around, if you will, the um, the leadership opportunities, 
And I'm wondering if there's uh, anybody on the call who would uh, like to you know, volunteer to help put together the next call. That doesn't mean you have to be the guest speaker uh, or, or anything, but maybe you could help find the guest speaker, or uh, maybe we don't even have a guest speaker. Maybe we just make it more of an interactive discussion for the next time. Uh, is there anybody who would be willing to, to put themselves forward a little bit? I guess you're the man, Bart. Bart, I've been taking notes throughout this meeting and I'm happy okay. to take minutes um, for future meetings. That's something that I have the capacity to do. That is great. That's great. In fact, I, uh, <laughs> that was also on my you know, list of things I, I meant to say at the beginning uh, and failed to was that it would be great to have somebody taking notes. So I saw that in the uh, then text notice you posted, so I've been doing it. Wow, that's, that's I can do an opening meditation. All right, great. Well, we've got at least a couple components. Um, there is also the uh, question of when we want our next meeting to be. Uh, the, obviously, uh, this is a Monday night. Um, what is it, the second Monday? That's what we talked about. Yeah. We're, does the second Monday of next month work as well for people? Yes. Works for me. Yes. yes, sounds good. Fantastic. Then uh, let's tentatively say that our next meeting will be on the uh, second Monday of, of February. Uh, any Great. Final, any final thoughts that uh, people want to share before we before we uh, call this meeting to a close? I'd like to express my appreciation for the talk uh, that was recorded because uh, this is the first thing that I've heard or seen that is close to the way that I intuitively do magic as a witch. And it also gives me ideas about how to develop it more. Me too. Great. I'll give a shout out to Bart for putting this all together, staying on top of things. <laughs> I do what I can. Um, all right. Well, uh, being respectful of everybody's time, I want to thank you all for your attention, for your participation. Of course, uh, don't forget to stop by the Earth Based Spirituality Action Team. If you're not a member on CCL, uh, you definitely want to join us there. And uh, it's easy to get in touch. If you wanted to get in touch with me, for example, my name is Bart Everson. Just type my name into Google, reach out to me personally, and I'll make sure that, you know, uh, that you're connected into the group if you're not. Uh, we do have discussions on the forums, and that's a great place to share resources and also to try to uh, share action steps that you're taking to promote sovereign climate change. So thank you, everybody. Uh, have a great day. And, if, of course, if you're in a place like where I live, happy Carnival, happy New Year, happy New Decade. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.